Anybody heard of the Dutch hunger famine? No. Bill has. It occurred towards the end of the war, and it was between 1944 and 1945. A German blockade led to severe food shortages in Holland, affecting millions of Dutch people, and it had long-lasting effects on their health and development. Uh, It's estimated at least 22,000 deaths occurred due to the famine, mostly elderly men. It affected all the children and everybody else as well. Now, interestingly, the guy on the right, Reichskommissar Arthur Seis Inquart, he struck back against the Dutch rail strike on the 27th that year by the blockade of all food transport by ship from the agricultural northeast to the western promises, provinces. He would later be sentenced to death at Nuremberg for the way in which he helped institute. There was a whole series of factors that led to it. But one of the main ones was that the Germans were trying to punish the various things that the Dutch were doing to help the Allies, who by that time had landed in Normandy. In all, about 4.5 million people were affected, I think is an interesting comparison. Can you see the one in the middle? It's a, yes. an, an RAF plane making a food drop during the famine in Holland. Yes. Does anybody know what the photograph on the left is? Gaza. Yes, and the RAF are dropping supplies on Gaza. And that on the right are the children affected in Gaza queuing up for, for food. It seems to me a very interesting comparison to make. Famine was first alleviated by Swedish bread flour being shipped in from Sweden to Dutch harbours and the airlift of food by the Royal Air Force, the Royal Canadian Air Force and the United States Army Air Force. After, and this is the interesting part. After an agreement with the occupying Germans that if the Germans did not shoot at the mercy flights, the Allies would not bomb the German positions. These were Operations Manor and Chow Hound. The bread ration by April 1945 fell to 400 grams a week per person. This is a Dutch ration book. Um, Together with one kilo of potatoes, this formed the entire weekly ration. The black market itself ran out of food and gas, electricity and heat were turned off. Everyone was very cold and very hungry. Tulip bulbs and sugar beets were commonly consumed. Furniture and houses were dismantled and trees were felled to provide fuel for heating. Although the humanitarian missions did mitigate the emergency, the famine persisted and ended only with the liberation of the Netherlands by the Allies in May 1945. You can see British soldiers serving food to Dutch children. Maternal mal- malnutrition was uh, was a problem. Pregnant women suffered from inadequate nutrition. This led to very low birth weight. Birth born during the famine had significantly lower birth weight and increased risk of a disease, high risk diabetes, cardiovascular disease and obesity. I didn't realise that Audrey Hepburn was Dutch. She was born in Holland that period with a Dutch mother and other family members and apparently for the rest of her life had problems with anemia and respiratory illness. Now, this is the other side of it. This is about epigenetics, and this is probably the easiest way to explain it. It was a short TikTok by this lady. The egg that made you was present inside of your maternal grandmother. And here's why. Women are born with all of the eggs that they will ever have, meaning that those eggs must be created in utero. So whilst your biological mother was inside the womb of your grandmother, your egg was also present. Meaning, to a certain extent, you existed inside of your maternal grandmother. We've learned about a concept called epigenetics, which basically is saying that the expression of your genes can and will be modified by environmental factors in real time, which suggests that whatever was going on in your maternal grandmother's life while she was pregnant with your biological mother has directly impacted your genes. There's a particularly dramatic example of this historically in what is known as the Dutch hunger winter. What basically happened is during World War II, there was a discrete period of about six months where the Dutch experienced extreme famine. And for those who survived, we have been able to track what happened to the individuals who were in utero during the famine, but never experienced the famine outside of the womb. So the offspring of the individuals who had been in utero during the famine also have demonstrated, for example, 
metabolic changes, the BMI in the grandchildren of the individuals who are pregnant during the famine tends to be higher. Somebody experiences a famine. They're pregnant during that famine. They survive the famine. Their offspring suffer the consequences of that famine, including things like metabolic changes, which of course would be evolutionarily adaptive. And then their children, none of whom have experienced famine, still demonstrate those same metabolic changes. Struggling with higher BMIs as a byproduct of what happened to their grandparents for six months. It's not just from her. There are a lot of other studies of it which have shown the epigenetic connection. It's one of the prime examples of epigenesis, which is the ability of small events that happened with your grandmother, which then have effects on you. So maternal grandmother. And I think it's interesting. Grandmother, is that your mother's mother? Yes. So if you knew what your your grandmother was going through that might have had effects on your mother, then might have some information about your particular issues. So what help it would be in actually solving any of them, I don't know. Anyway, I thought it was a very interesting topic. Can, can I tell you about my mother was involved in that? She was a matron and the head of all the theatres in North Africa during the war with Montgomery. And when they moved from North Africa en masse they were moved to, into europe to help with this particular process as well and all the brits that went to help the uh, dutch people uh that they, they need they required nurses they required doctors just as made the connection to gaza just as gaza requires all the things that go on at a daily basis there was very little food for anyone who was actually living there working and helping with all the people that were there and all that didn't come out till mum's in her 90s we, we've mentioned this before that a lot of the people coming back from the war did not talk about uh, what happened to their children they didn't want to pass on you know the horrors of what they went through but you apply the logic of the moment if the local people can't eat the people who are there helping them can't eat even though they have supplies being brought in. But at that point, a lot of the bombers and the air force was depleted by that part of the war. And there weren't enough uh, rations to go around for here in country, let alone be sent out to Europe as well. One of the things that they found is that celiac disease disappeared hmm. because there's no bread. And as soon as they got bread after it, it reappeared again. So it, it, it became a very good indicator, perhaps there was a big association between the two. I mean, diabetes as well. And uh, rheumatoid arthritis was another thing that disappeared yeah. because it's a blood-based condition. But not the correlation with Gaza. We can see on a daily basis everything that's going on there. And I believe that there is a degree of, uh, of, of worldwide complacency in terms of the fact that we can see what's happening. But back in the Second World War, we're, we only understand from what we're told through the political processes via the journalists and the newspapers, because they didn't want the other side to know what it was they were doing. You've spooked me, Bernard, because I never knew my maternal grandmother. So I have the ghost in the family tree. She's never been mentioned. I only oh. got a I only got a picture of her three years ago. Her husband disappeared as well. There was a rumor that she was sectioned, but that maybe after she'd given birth to so many children that in those days depression seemed a lockupable offense. So all the things that you bring up makes us think. Yeah. Uh, Really good. Thank you. Uh, you've got to reach your own conclusions about it, or if you're uh, interested, go and find. But there's an enormous amount the uh, Dutch hunger. Uh, uh, but it's, uh, it's a cautionary tale, really. Anyway, you learn something new, don't you? It's Easter Sunday, isn't it? Has anybody had an Easter egg or got an Easter egg? It's funny that you were talking about eggs, actually, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a good link. 